When you've studied cells in the past, you've probably looked at the classic plant and animal cell. But in actual fact, there are lots and lots of different types of cells, even within plants and within animals. Specialized cells are cells that have become differentiated to perform a certain function. First up, let's look at that classic plant cell. The one that we often draw is a palisade cell, and its job is light absorption and photosynthesis. It's adapted for its function in that it's got a large surface area, and it's also got lots and lots of chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are the organelles which are responsible for photosynthesis. Next up is the red blood cell. This one is responsible for oxygen transport. It's got a large surface area which is provided by that biconcave shape. It's got no nucleus in some species. In humans, the red blood cells have got no nucleus in, and that gives more room for hemoglobin, which is what's responsible for carrying oxygen. Nerve cells are responsible for transmitting nerve impulses. These are very long, so they can take information over long distances through the body. They've got connections at each end so they can connect up to the receptors or to the next nerve cell and they can carry electrical signals. Sperm cells are able to fuse with an egg cell known as an ovum to produce a zygote. They've got a tail to swim, they've got lots and lots of mitochondria and they've also got enzymes in the head inside of something called the acrosome. Next up is the ovum, which, as we've said, it fuses with the sperm to make a zygote. This cell is particularly large. It's got a large cytoplasm with yolk as an energy store, and it's also got an outer layer that prevents more than one sperm from entering. Ciliated cells are responsible for moving mucus along. For example, to move mucus, which traps dust and pathogens, out of the lungs. They've got hair-like projections which are able to move in order to waft mucus. In this diagram, there are several ciliated cells and you can see the little hair-like structures on top of them known as cilia. And there is a goblet cell in amongst them which produces the mucus which is able to trap things like pathogens and dust. Root hair cells are responsible for the intake of water and minerals from the soil and they've got a particularly large surface area in order to do that. Next up is the xylem vessel. Now this is not an individual cell, but it is made from the remains of cells. Its job is transporting water, and the cells that once made it up have hollowed out to form a sort of tube. It's got a strengthened cellulose wall, it contains lignin for extra strength, and obviously it's got that hollow lumen in order for water to move through it. Mm.